What are we doing? We are going to be talking about some movies. Some? More than one uh, movie? Just one. Oh. It's one. We, no, we <laughs> definitely don't film these all at once. What are you talking about? Well, bam. Well, bam. All right. We're a little late on this. We're a little late on getting to Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto. This was released last year by Arrow. We want to make it up to everyone uh, for missing this at the time. So we're going to show you what's in there. We're going to talk about every movie really fairly briefly. And then, in the coming months, uh, we're going to talk about each of them individually, except the ones we've already talked about. Look at all this stuff. So, this is an eight feature-length film set, but there's actually more than eight on here, in here, because there are multiple short films. Mm -hmm. this, and this came with a book. Yes. As per usual, uh, this, with Arrow box sets, this came with a book. Uh, it's got some essays in it. It's got some screenshots of the films, and it's got uh, credits for each project in here. It also comes with, is this a poster? I believe so. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. It tears limited edition poster while trying to open up. Oh my gosh. Yes, it looks like it's a double-sided poster. Yeah, it does. So there's the cover art again in full size poster form glory i don't know and then on the opposite side is the new art for tetsuo because as per usual as well each release in here has new cover art um but unlike usual the opposite side of each sleeve is not the uh, original poster art which is what they typically do which is what arrow typically does instead it's a poster for the other movie in the set. Each of them has two of the main films on it. So yeah, there are eight, fil eight feature films and uh, two short films. It has the, um, Don, what is it? Denshu. Denshu, yeah. yeah. Denshu Kozo. Yeah, Denshu Kozo. The Adventures of the Light Pole Boy. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess let's briefly go through each of them. And, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So we'll start with First them. up, we got Tetsubo. We don't need to talk about Tetsu. We already talked. No. Uh, we have already talked about go, Tetsu. Go watch our video. Yeah, we, and have, we have a video on it. As well as The Adventures of Denshi Kozo, which is the short film mm -hmm. in, on this one so as well. Also, we yeah. also did a video about that. Yeah, we did a video already. Go look at those. Look at the card. The other film on this set is Tetsuo 2. Body Hammer. The, oh, yeah. No, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I was about to make a joke about really creative naming conventions, but. It literally has a subtitle. It does. <laughs> so, Tetsuo 2. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about Tetsuo 2? How do you feel about Tetsuo 2? I think Tetsuo 2 is like the new game plus of Tetsuo 1. Yeah. I have to agree with that. Um, like, I don't know if that's a controversial opinion to have or not. And uh, Tetsuo 3 is not in this set. So we have not seen the third of the Tetsuo trilogy, um, so I can't compare that either. No. But. but. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think Tetsuo 2 takes so much from the first one and sort of reinvents it mm -hmm. while adding more context and more nuance and arguably, like, more purpose. I guess yeah, that, like, yeah, I can see that. I felt like it had a meaning other than just being sort of, like, weird crazy cyberpunk kind of yeah. like yeah yeah that doesn't mean i didn't like both of them no no i enjoyed no. both movies the first one is still a really good movie yeah the first one's still great and i think i can see why some people would prefer the first one over the second one because of that like the, the what's the word what, what did you say the meaning no, yeah. that is present in the second one yeah i can i can see why people would enjoy the first one more because it's lacking in that purpose or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. um but i think both are good yeah mm -hmm. i would agree yeah all right what's next <laughs> <clears throat> so next up uh so <laughs> several years later we have tokyo fist uh tokyo fist is a film about a a man who has another man intrude on his life very very rudely 
and he gets very mad at this other man and decides to take up boxing at the same gym mm -hmm. as this other man so that he can take out his anger on this other man. It's very, it's, it's a much more grounded story. Yes, but it's still chaotic. <laughs> it's still extremely chaotic. Yeah. It still employs a lot of the same sort of special effects with, like, uh, stop motion at certain points. Oh, yeah. I think, like, part of, like, Tsukamoto's style with being a director is, like, having this, like, crazy chaotic, like, camera movement or, like, yes. a, a, a single figure standing in a crowd and, like, the crowd just, like, being, moving around them, like, yeah. in, 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 like, sped up. Basically. Right, like, almost like a time lapse. Yeah, sort of. yeah, but they just stand there. Mm -hmm. um, the, so there's, like, there's definitely, like, a almost loneliness to the way that he films. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, especially in a lot of his earlier movies. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Mm, and I, I like that. I, I feel mm -hmm. like that's not present in a lot of, a lot of cinematography in general. Mm -hmm. So I think it's cool. I think the way he does it actually works for the stories that he tells. Yeah, because a lot of his stories, see, or at least his early ones, are very heavily based on being like in metropolitan Japan. And being around all these people, but still being super duper isolated mm -hmm. and super lonely. Yeah, and yeah. And I think it really yeah, there, that. yeah. There's definitely like an like an isolation factor, and like the being in other. Yes. Um, that's like a theme that seems to uh, crop up again and again in his titles. Yeah. Maybe not specifically this one though. Kind of. I feel like, like it kind of comes up. The, us. Like the guy who comes and punches the guy. Yes. Like the guy who is. The other dude right. is kind of like the other. Yeah, he's just, he's not the protagonist in this case, whereas mm. he is in some of the others. Yes, yes. So what did, what did you think of Tokyo Fist? I enjoyed it. I mean, it stuck with me. I, like, so it's like, these, none of these movies are like, oh my gosh, my favorite movie ever, because you know, y'all know me, I'm like, I love my fluff. <laughs> it's true. So, so like, I appreciate stylistically hmm. these movies and the way they look and, um, how they were filmed, um, the way that uh, the cinematography is used to help amplify the story that's being told. Um, so like, I appreciate them, and I, I yeah. liked this one. Yeah. I, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have no complaints. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not like I loved it so much, and mm -hmm. it's my favorite. I'm gonna watch it once a week. Like that's. Just, that's fair. Maybe once a month. Maybe once a month. But not once a week. No. Yeah. I, I think I'm kind of in the same boat, um, because I think, I think Tokyo Fist is is really interesting because it was his first um, of his early period that is more grounded like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not. I almost I, I want to compare it to the next one in line, <clears throat> actually, uh, Bullet Ballet, because it feels like it's telling a very similar story, but I feel like Tokyo Fist was in certain ways a rough rough draft for how he worked with more grounded, less insane stories. Mm -hmm. And Bullet Ballet just feels so much more refined in its execution. Uh, I, I suppose. So Bullet Ballet is another one that it's about a disaffected guy living in metropolitan Japan. And once again, this guy is played by Tsukamoto. We should mention that too. The, especially oh, in his yeah. early stuff. Yeah, Tsukamoto is in a lot of these movies, mm -hmm. which I like. And quite often he's the main character. He's good. If not one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. He's very good. He's, he's very good. good. He's multifaceted as a yeah. like person with talents. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um oh, and this time around, it's all about him trying to get his hands on a gun. Which, if you know anything about gun laws in Japan, that is not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is also an incredibly illegal thing to do in most cases. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and he's trying to get a gun, and he falls in with this group of, uh, I, I almost, I want to say they're kids, they're like either late teens or early 20s, mm -hmm. who are like roughhousing and like to hang out at this club, and the first couple times they meet him, all they're doing is beating him up. Yeah, he gets beat up a lot in mm -hmm. this. Like, really horribly. Yeah. And he, he wants to... It almost feels like he wants to save one of them. Like, there's this one young woman. Yeah, yeah. I picked up so, on that a little bit. Like, he seemed to have some kind of, like, gravitational pull towards her. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if it was necessarily salvation. I'm not sure what it was, but there was definitely a chemistry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I think I think I find this one more interesting or more I, I don't know I guess like compelling than Tokyo Fist because Tokyo Fist is so so heavily centered around uh, this this guy and his horrible horrible love life uh, because of this other guy coming in and like ruining everything mm -hmm. whereas this one is just about just the guy trying to find a way to fit into a group it has a lot less to do with his motivations have a lot less to do with his love life and how messed up it is mm -hmm. and in this case it has a lot more to do with just like him recognizing other people who are hurting and instead of wanting to hurt them he wants to help them at least that's what it feels like to me yeah i was gonna say wow you seem to have like gone on this <laughs> crazy interpretation of this like i'm gonna be honest with you mm -hmm. I liked Tokyo Fist more than Bullet Ballet. Did you? I did. Like I, yeah. I'm gonna. Like, I don't really remember Bullet Ballet. I to be don't. to be fair, it's been it's been we've been watching these over the course of a little while. Yeah, so. and I like Tokyo Fist. I'm like, yep, I remember that. I I mm -hmm. could tell you like somewhat beat for beat what happened in the movie. Like I I have more grounding of of how that movie played out. I do not remember. I all I remember about Bullet Ballet was she was standing in front of a of train and wanted to die there mm -hmm. was a lot of um like suicide club-esque yeah um imagery there which mm -hmm. like totally tracks with you liking it more than the other one that just totally <laughs> makes sense trying to say, Kylie. <laughs> so i'm not saying i didn't like it i'm just saying like i did not interpret it that way mm -hmm. i definitely did not feel like he was looking to help this group like, yeah. I did not pick up on that at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this was a little bit, like, more, like, where Tokyo Fist was, like, uh, more grounded in reality, kind mm -hmm. of. Bullet Ballet kind of went back towards that chaotic, like... I can see that. Um, less story-driven style that is more present in, like, Tetsuo 1. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this this wasn't, like... I, that probably, it was probably one of my, like, in the lower half of the ones that I liked. That's fair. Bullet Ballet, specifically. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. But that just makes sense that we would feel that way, honestly. Fair. So we forgot to talk about uh, Densho Kozu. I don't know. Did I say that right? Denshu? Densho Kozu. Kozo. Densho Kozo. Densho Kozo. We made a video about it. Okay, yeah. So. Okay. Unless you want to talk about mm -hmm. it. Next. So next, we go into... The 2000s, I think, with A Snake of June, which is, uh, it's a movie you probably can't talk about on YouTube or else you get demonetized. It's like, there's a lot of sexy stuff. Yeah. But this didn't have that much, I mean, I, yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. So this one, uh, <laughs> Tsukamoto plays a photographer? stalker, voyeur, photographer guy. Yeah, like. Yeah, is he a vo uh, voyeur? Is like it's, it's eh. hard to say because you never are given like like a, a full we, explanation. Like of, we don't ever really. Eh, yeah. Anyway, he's a photographer. He's and he takes some photos of a lady. Some very lewd and photos. Without her knowledge. Yeah, she doesn't know about. Well, but then she does know about it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's like, I'll give you the negatives, and you can do with them what you want. Mm -hmm. If you do some stuff for me. And that's not, it's not weird. Like, you're not going to do stuff, like, for me. Like You're going to do stuff for you that, that I, I tell, tell you, you to, do. to do. Yeah. It's it's a weird movie. It's a very, I, and, you know, like, crazy enough, I actually liked this one more than I liked yeah. Bullet Ballet. I really did. This all It's all in blue. The entire movie is blue. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's like, everything's blue, baby. Black and <laughs> Like, instead of black and white, it's, or instead of sepia, it's, it's like, blue, blue and black. Like, that's the spectrum. It's a monochromatic yeah. movie that is in the shade, or in the hue of blue. Yes. Like, that's... Like, Which makes sense, because it's raining the entire movie. It is raining the entire movie. Which there's, makes sense, because it's in the rainy season. There's so much rain. Yeah. There's so much rain. But, yeah, I, I, um, like, I... I'm a more of a visual person, mm -hmm. so this one stuck with me more. Which, funny yeah. enough, like I when I think about it, it's not blue in my brain. Mm -hmm. It's weird. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I can't say why I like this one because mm -hmm. I think I think you could argue either way that this is like feminist or yes. not feminist. Like I think it's, it's one, one of those. Of, it's it's one, one of those. It's definitely that, one of those. Like you could say like, oh, this is an, a woman empowerment thing mm -hmm. because she's like she's finding who she is and doing all mm -hmm. her stuff. But like through doing that, she's being told what to do by a man, and like she's only right. really doing it because of the man. But right. at first, she does it because of herself. So like, I don't know. There's because <laughs> because once again. This is another one where she's in a bad relationship. Yeah. And, he, and, and, and the photographer is like, you should do this stuff because then you'll know what you actually want out of life. Yeah. like Because well, like, you obviously don't want to be. It's, but, well, it's, I mean, yeah, know. it's a bad relationship because the guy that she's with is literally like, she gets breast cancer. And the yes. guy that she's with is like, do you really have to get your breasts removed? Yeah. And I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. Relationship yeah. pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> If anyone is in a relationship with somebody who gets upset about them having surgery done in order to save their life, yeah. probably not a good person to be with. Mm -mm. That This has no. been Kylie's relationship no. corner. G goodbye. Thank also, you. Also spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of the crux of the film. It's, but it's like, kind of the climax. Like, <laughs> the climax. Ew. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I liked this one, and call me weird, but I, I enjoyed it. Like, No, I was going to say, I like this one. I would I, watch this one again. I, I would watch this one again. I, I would probably watch just about any of these again. But yeah, I yeah. like this one because there's that level of ambiguity to it mm -hmm. that I feel like, I feel like it'll pretty neatly fall into two categories of, like, she's in the right or he's in the right. Mm -hmm. Or, like, you know, it's, it's, it's feminist or it's misogynist. So I feel like it, it, it'll it probably be pretty, pretty split in people's opinions. It could be a polarizing movie for sure. But mm -hmm. I would say even with Tetsuo and Denji Kozo and Tetsuo 2, this might be the weirdest movie in the set. Really? Yes. Really? I what makes so. you say that? Because it is so stylistically out there compared to the rest of them. Because they, mm. like, they have like a through line of his style. Like certain certain types of camera work, uh -huh. him being a character, all this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. But this one has such its own strong sense of identity compared with the others. I feel. I can see that. Yeah, I, think I can. I, I not think just because like of the out of the lineup, this one stands apart. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can. I don't think it's the only one that stands apart. No, but I, no. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. But it, it's almost it, because the whole thing is occurring without any sort of weather changes and because of the tinting and because of just the mood of the entire thing, it mm -hmm. almost feels like a dream. Like yeah. Like it's one long, it's, continuous dream. It is really surreal. You know? Like, yeah, the, the rain specifically is mm -hmm. like, yeah. Just nonstop. There's, like, rain is a motif in these movies, though. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll, like, especially the later ones, mm -hmm. they, they, it's like raining all the time. Or like, yes. anytime, like, anything, like, substantial is happening, mm -hmm. it's raining. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a, mm -hmm. So, next is actually not one that has a cover. Uh, it's another short film. It is called Haze, and I think it's about 50 minutes or so. It doesn't have a cover? Mm -mm. Aw, man! So I'll just open it up so you can have like a sneak peek of Haze, what's to come. Haze was a short film that he made specifically for a film festival, and the initial cut was like 25 minutes or something, but this is the full 50-ish minute cut of it. It's a movie about a guy who wakes up in a weird space and he tries to navigate his way out of it Haze, that's pretty oh, much the whole thing i thought you were finished haze is a trip like if you need a, a movie to watch for uh, halloween mm -hmm. haze, haze, haze will do it yeah ha haze will get you right <laughs> in that horror mood um it is a horror movie not in the sense of like body horror though there technically mm -hmm. is body horror but it's not like it's not like tetsuo or tetsuo too yeah it's not it's no not it's not of... like that it, but yeah haze is like it will get it'll like creep into your skin mm -hmm. and it'll stay there like i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it <laughs> so, I think... if you have claustrophobia you will not like this movie <laughs> yeah uh what did you think of it well this one came out in i think like 2005 or something like that so 
it was right around the time that stuff like Saw and Hostel and stuff like that was really starting to take off. Mm. Like, the whole American wave of, like, torture porn movies. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like this is a reaction to that and saying, look, you can achieve the same level of uncomfortability but have, like, a thousand times more restraint. And that's, I'm not knocking any of that. If that's your bag, that's, mm-hmm. then you're, you're good. Like, yeah. whatever. Uh, but that's what this felt like. It felt like it's trying to achieve the same ends that you get from watching a torture porn movie without actually, like, mutilating any of the characters. Because he's put in these mm-hmm. extremely uncomfortable situations and with the sound design and the camera work and, like you said, the claustrophobia, because the whole thing is basically set in this, like, concrete maze that's only big enough, just barely big enough to fit him in it. Mm-hmm. And so he's put in all these situations where he has to try and get out, but in order to get out, he has to, like, contort his body or he has, he has to... put himself in, in, in uncomfortable situations. But it never goes to the point of just being like, hey, you gotta... Cut your eyeball out. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it never just full full bore goes into that territory. Yeah. And I think it's really effective because of that. It is. It's like I said, like, I get goosebumps thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, and, like, even just the concept of waking up somewhere and being mm-hmm. like, how did I get here? Like, I don't remember. And, like, but he, basically he wakes up and, like, there's a wall. Like, yes. he's laying down on his back and there's a wall right here. Mm-hmm. And he's like. And he can't see he can't, any... There's, like, nothing. Like, yeah. It's like, just, like, an open plane. Mm-hmm. Like, it is... It's, it's, it's a... I feel like if you liked the first third of The Descent, <laughs> yes, you will like yes. this movie, which I know yeah. might kind of sound like it's coming out of nowhere, but, like, it gave me that same, like, oh, mm-hmm. tense, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. 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 So Haze is good. Haze is good. Haze is su- but... one of these surprising... High points. Yeah. Yes. Of, of this box set. Uh, but we we both love horror movies, mm-hmm. so Halloween is like it's like our favorite month. It's our favorite month. <laughs> it's our Halloween. favorite month. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, but the next. Next up, at some point, uh, otherwise in the two thousands, Vital is about a med student. Okay. Who uh, is put in? I don't feel like this is really spoilers because it happens so early in the movie. He's put in the uncomfortable situation of having been in an accident that has uh, damaged his memory, but his girlfriend died in the same accident, and he is going back to medical school, and in his um, dissection class, the cadaver that he and his group get is his girlfriend. And that's... Honestly, that's a large part of the movie. And, like, he didn't remember her at first, but as he's dissecting her, that's when he starts to realize, oh, I know this person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, as a premise, sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. I just, it just didn't, it didn't work for me. It didn't hold my attention. Same. There was a lot of, like, um, this had a lot of color imagery as well, um, like, with tonal Mm -hmm. shifts and things like that. I, I think... This movie was trying to be, like, parallel universe or, like, other dimension or, like, dream state versus reality and not being able to differentiate between the two. And, like, I think if you went back and rewatched this one or two times, mm-hmm. like, knowing that and, and, like, paid attention to, like, sometimes the lighting is blue, sometimes mm-hmm. the lighting is orange, sometimes the lighting is natural, and... If you pay attention to that and, like, those parts of the movie and how they all line up together, I think you could probably really interpret something cool out of this movie. I agree. I really think you could come up with a really, really cool interpretation. I just wasn't in it, like, for my first watch through. I I was in the same boat. The the main thing that I took out of it was I thought... Uh, some of the cutaways that were happening from the present were legitimate memories, and mm-hmm. some of them were fabricated memories. And mm-hmm. he was he was having trouble um, because he was starting to regain his memory. With, and, but like with memory loss as well, like he he couldn't he right. didn't know what to believe, what was right. fabricated, like right. So mm-hmm. he he wasn't sure what to interpret, what way, because there's there's basically like three different 
timelines going on. It feels there's, like, like it. The present, yeah. there's what appears to be the past, and then there's what appears to be like a parallel dimension or something. Something, yeah. And so, yeah, but I, I was I was in the same boat. I think, honestly, if I watched this a few more times and I went into it knowing what it was going to be more so now that I've seen it once, mm-hmm. I might have a greater appreciation for it, but I feel like it's one of the low points of this box set, and it's still good. It's still good. Oh, yeah. I, w- I mean, honestly, there's not a bad movie in this whole box set. No. Personally, no. I, no. I, I don't think there's a bad movie. I mean, I tend to... It's very hard to come up with a movie that I don't like, but I think, generally speaking, these are all, like, at a five or above, mm-hmm. like, on the scale of one to ten. Yeah. Like... I'm having a really hard time coming up with movies that you don't like. Watchmen. That, that's an easy one. Here we go! Woohoo! So, the last last set, not the last set, the last disc, like you said. Mm-hmm. This is from 2011, I think. Did I get it right, future Eli? I hope so. <laughs> so this is jumping forward, I think, like half a decade or so. And this one, the next one on the set, is called Kotoko. And it stars uh, Coco, who you might remember if you've watched the channel for a while, from uh, Bride for Rip Van Winkle. Mm-hmm. She played Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> and um, I'd have to double check this, but I think, as far as I understand, this one was directed by Tsukamoto, but co written with her, I think. Um, yeah. Which would make sense because she occupies like 90% of the screen time in this movie. Yeah, yeah. She's it's almost exclusively. She's the main character for, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so Kotoko is about a woman who has, she has a baby a son and she has some sort of unspecified mental illness. Yeah. That affects the way that she perceives the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that it, as is displayed in the box art, uh, she sees double. Like she'll see two copies of every person that she encounters, mm-hmm. things like that. And really, the whole movie is about her. her just it's it's basically just about her life. Yeah. I I would almost argue that this one is the least plot driven out of all of these movies. This is way more character driven than yes. Like yes. there's not like a defined like, you know like like here's the adventure to, and we started here yeah. and then this was the high point yeah. and then this was everything after it was done. Yeah, because no, like like, it like have that. Tokyo Fist, it's like the guy shows up back into his life, and that's like the inciting action, mm-hmm. and then he goes and joins the gym, and you can realize that stuff is starting to ramp up mm-hmm. and like that sort of thing. Whereas this, it's just like. It's almost episodic. You could, yeah, I mean, you could argue that, like, yeah, I think episodic is a better way to put it, because mm-hmm. it's, like, first she has, she's, is a mom, and then she has mm-hmm. a breakdown, and then her kid is taken away, but then she meets this guy, and then, like... <laughs> who's Tsukamoto. Yeah, who is Tsukamoto. Of um, course. So, yeah, I, I think, yeah, episodic is mm-hmm. maybe a little bit better. It, it, it has a plot, but... Oh, absolutely. It, it, yeah, it's more character-driven, mm-hmm. which is... My kind of movie. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more like Our Little Sister and less like... Yes. Departures. Not even Departures is kind of character driven. Yeah, that's pretty episodic too. Yeah. This is more like Our Little Sister and less like A Bride for Rip Van Winkle. Yeah. So even that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I'm having a hard time. Listen, we have a type, okay? That's true. Um, and that type is Coco. Because she's great. Yeah, she is great. She's honestly... She's really, she sings in this movie. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, because she's, like, she's primarily a singer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These are the only two movies that I've seen her in. I don't know how many more movies she's done. Yeah. But she's great. Yeah, she's, she's great. Um, well, what did you think? Because um, I feel like I've been answering that first, so... Let me consult my list again. I don't know if I'd say this is... The best. I think I'd have to watch all of these one or two more times before I could decide, like, what is my favorite. Mm-hmm. But this is definitely one of the best in this set. Yeah. Uh, in your opinion. In my, no. It's a fact. <laughs> um, this movie is b- brutal. Um, it's really uncomfortable. And it's really good. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, this movie will mess you up. Where Hayes has restraint, uh, Kotoko does not. And I feel like there's a very good reason that it doesn't. Yeah. Because it's being honest. Yeah, Kotoko is... It's real. Um, yeah. It's... It's emotional. Like, it'll... Yeah. It'll, like... It'll stick with you. Mm-hmm. The way it makes you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This... This was rough to watch, but yeah. not in a bad way. Like, I enjoyed it. This is, it's like, it's like Eureka. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. oh my, this is a lot of emotion and trauma mm-hmm. to be taking in. And yeah, like, I, I would argue, which I think we'll talk about more when we actually cover this movie, but I yeah. would argue that her undefined mental illness is anxiety. Mm-hmm. And as somebody who has anxiety, I feel like this is a very accurate portrayal of what it is like to have anxiety. Yeah. And it's sad. It's like, like it's just, it's sad. It's yeah. really, really sad. And, and then it's not sad, and then it's even more sad. So Anyone who's seen this movie knows what we're talking about. <laughs> so just, just prepare yourself yeah. for feeling nothing. Yeah. Because... There are certain there are certain subjects that storytellers will cover, uh-huh. and there are certain subjects that deserve, like, there are certain subjects that stories need to like earn the ability to talk about mm-hmm. more sensitive things because if they don't if they don't earn it, then it feels like they're being exploitative. Yeah, it's contrived. This movie definitely earns it. <laughs> yeah. And it takes full advantage of what it has earned. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's it's rough. Mm-hmm. It's a rough watch. It's very, it's, yes. If you, I, I, and I honestly, I, honestly, I think if you're somebody who is, like, not really in touch with their emotions, which that's fine, you know, you do you, mm-hmm. uh, who doesn't, who's never had a depression or a mental mm-hmm. illness, who's never had anxiety, like, it might not hit you the same way. And that's totally fine. But for somebody who is, like, I cry, like, every day. Like, <laughs> I don't cry every day. Not for real. No, I'm just kidding. But no, like, for somebody who's, like, you know, who, who is an emotional person, mm-hmm. this this was a rough movie. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. It's very good. No, I enjoyed it a lot. Yes. It, and, like, and I was really excited because I thought it was going to have a happy ending. But spoiler alert, it doesn't. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot, and I will probably never watch it again. Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah. 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 Like, I got... I, I didn't got, know what I was getting into. No. And if I did know what I was getting into, I might not have watched it in the first place. Yeah, it was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a roller coaster of emotion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moving on. On to the next one. <laughs> Last but not least. All right. So, the final film is all the way from 2018. Uh, Killing. So... Killing is quite unusually. I uh, <laughs> I knew this, but I did not tell you because I wanted to see what your reaction was. It's a period drama um, that is set during the Tokugawa period, so somewhere in the 16 to 1800s, and uh, it's about a wandering samurai played by Tsukamoto, <laughs> mm-hmm. who shows up at a very small farming. It's not even a village, honestly. It's like two families. Yeah, it's like a... It's just a farm, basically. Yeah, it's Um, just a farm. And he shows up there, and one of the guys who's living there and working there is supposedly a samurai, and there's a little kid. He's not a little kid, he's a teenager. Yeah. Who wants to be one, and his older sister is like, no, because if you go do that, then you're just going to straight up die. And then this uh, group of wandering samurai without masters wanders on through and basically that's what the movie's about. It's about the conflict between this group and the one wandering samurai and all the people who live here and them just trying to keep the peace and the peace not being kept (laughs) and Yeah. yeah. This was a weird ending to the set. It's very strange. It was like anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. As as the ending, I would say watch this in the middle. That's fair. Yeah, in terms of this box set. Yeah, specifically I, I would, just this yeah. box set. Yeah. Part of me wonders, 
because they skipped from 2011 to 2018. Mm-hmm. And I know he's had at least a few movies in between there. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Tetsuo 3 came out in between there. Mm-hmm. And that other one, uh, Fire Fire on the Plains, or Fires on the Plane, mm-hmm. the one that's about... The, the uh, Yukio Mishima book? No. Oh. It's, it's a different one. I can't remember the Is that not a Yukio author's... Mishima book? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I can't remember the author's name, but it's the one... It's about the soldiers at the end of World War II in the Philippines. Oh. He did that one as well in between. Oh, okay. So I'm wondering if, like, stylistically and thematically, if we had had all the missing pieces in between Kotoko and Killing, if it would have made more sense. Maybe, yeah. I because we see... haven't seen any of those. Yeah, I could see that. But, but... This, was, this was a weird, like, cap mm-hmm. to this set. I mean, I didn't hate it. No, no, not at all. It's still, it's it's really, really well made. It's mm-hmm. really well acted. Like, everything about it is really good. Yeah. It just feels like, kind of the, like, odd man out. It's, like, tacked on at the end. Kind of, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, in in, in the box set, mm-hmm. uh, it that's it felt weird yeah. to me personally. Same, same. But on but its, its own, good. it's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, in the middle. For yeah. me, like it'd probably be like it's it is probably also in the lower half for me. I think I would agree with that. I think it's it's not the best and it's not the worst yeah. that's in here. Yeah. So I think that's part of what makes it feel kind of anticlimactic to end on it, mm-hmm. especially after having one of the best ones just directly precede it. Yeah, that's true. So. One of the one of what we uh, one did, of our favorites. Yeah, one of our yeah. favorites. I mean, yeah. arguably, could be the worst. So could be. Yeah. Could have terrible taste. Could be. But that's it. That's the box yep. set. So that is the entire box set. Um, that is Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsumoto. Um, I think this is out of print at this point, but like I said, we wanted to... Is it out of print, really? I think it, it took is. us that long? I think, I think, I think it is. <laughs> um, but uh, we don't have any sort of insider information or anything, but... I do know Arrow, you know, they've been releasing, like, the limited edition of their box sets, and then later on, they'll release, like, slimline versions of it. Like, I know the Ring box set got that, and the Taisho trilogy got that, so maybe this one will be re-released eventually. Mm-hmm. But just for for what it is, I mean, if you can find a copy of it or anything like that, this is this is probably good. This is probably one of my favorite box sets that we've received, actually, which I, is, I like... So. yeah. I think I'd agree with that. It's a beefy boy. It's big. Because they're I mean, usually like three, four movies. Yeah. And this one's this is, like... This is a lot. It's a, it's a lot. lot of content. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I... This is this is one of my... Like, in terms of like how many of the movies would I rewatch? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Like, that's my criteria for like, is it one of my favorites? I agree with that. Yeah. 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 Tell us what you think. Yeah, what do you think? In the comments. Have you seen it? Do you have it? Have you seen any of these movies? Do you know any of these movies besides Tetsuo? Because it seems like most people know Tetsuo. Yeah. And which, what What are his best movies that aren't included in this box set? Because yeah. I know that there are some holes in here. So what did we miss out on that we should check out? I don't see any holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>